All right, serious and silliness bodybuilding's got Ryan Forster. IFBB Pro and up, Blue Collar Worker, which I like because I'm a blue collar guy too. And Ryan's on. And what's happening, Ryan? What's going on, man? Not a lot, man. I'm just sitting here on my lunch break, you know, <laughs> on the job. But we're going to make time to get on here and chat with you for a bit. Yeah, so uh, we were talking a little bit before, and you're a blue collar guy. You're a, you're a painter by by trade, right? Yes, sir. Have been my whole life. Yeah, I'm a sewer worker in New York City. And uh, oh, there you I, go. You know yeah, what it's, it's like. Then. It's disgusting. Yeah. So and uh, yeah. <laughs> and my whole family are electricians. My grandfather, my father, my brothers. I was an electrician for about ten years before I took the job at New York City, and now I'm a fucking sewer worker on a podcast. And the strangest part is, I found time. And I, I just want to point this out because I'm getting a lot of hate when I when I talk about things. There were two degrees back then. We say blue and green. And and those degrees are in psychology. So I took a lot of shit on my MD show because I talked about why I don't cry. <laughs> and <laughs> everybody's judging me. And I'm like, I literally studied, you know, human nature for six years. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Um, so where'd you come from, Brian? Uh, Ryan, where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Hood River, Oregon. It's pretty close to Portland. Okay. So Northwest for the most most part of my life. I was born in North Carolina. But I think we moved out here on the West Coast when I was like 10 or 12 years old. Okay. Um, so this is pretty much all I know. And yeah, man, I think by the time I was in high school, you know, I was hitting the gym with my brother and I was playing sports. I was really, really small and I was just trying to bulk up. And that's kind of how that whole ball got rolling. Yeah, let, let's I'm going to show uh, if anybody if Ryan is a new new IFBB pro. When did you, when did you turn pro? Uh, December 2022. So this last nationals. Okay, the last nationals you you talked about. I was the super heavyweight runner up. I got I got Who? beat by Cole Cole Eastwood Eastfold. Oh, oh that's right. I forgot yeah, about that. He guy. was way, yeah, yeah, yeah. way than me. That's all right. But I I want to show. So what happened was. I mean, I knew who you were because I followed the nationals last year. But you know, you tend to you tend to forget people. You know, when you, you know when you don't when you don't interact with them or whatnot. So I think uh, Danny is a mutual friend of ours, right? Yeah, yeah, Dan, yeah. yeah. Danny, Danny Broadhurst is who's always on my MD channel and does Anabolic Academy with me in the evenings, um, where we take questions. He's like, "Yeah, you got to interview Ryan Forster." So I was like, "All right, let me go to Instagram and see who this guy Ryan Forster is." So I'm going to show everybody uh, how I was like uh, pretty impressed because this really blew me away. Here's Ryan Forster doing some chest. Uh, with I believe those are 170 pound dumbbells, yeah. and yeah, you're that's you're literally pressing them like they're 60s. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's I'm good, I'm a strong presser, man. I don't know, I always you have think, holy yeah. shit, like how many reps do you get that for? <laughs> I got 12 slow... on those. Oh, okay, that's a there you go. PR for me, so maybe 11. He, he helped me a little on that last one. <laughs> it's like, holy shit, this guy's a beast. But anyway, so yeah, you're a very strong bodybuilder. That's that's for sure. That's that's actually always fun to see because that's always people like seeing that. Do you know what I mean? Like people love seeing. I mean, listen, everybody loved Dexter Jackson. He was probably arguably the greatest bodybuilder that ever that ever. But you know, nobody really liked seeing him because he, he didn't. He wasn't very strong. People would look at his form and whatnot. But then when you used to watch like Johnny Jackson or like Branch uh, Warren, those guys, yeah, they, those guys were fucking animals. It was ridiculous. So you're like in that category where it's like yeah this isn't this isn't heavy the off season's <laughs> never very very pretty you know it's like i don't really want to show off what i look like but showing off the you know the work that it actually takes yeah. you know i know it's not it definitely doesn't get as much traction as my like physique update posts mm -hmm. you know i'll get like 1200 likes on something like that and then i'll post me doing the 170s for however many are deadlifts and plates for shit ton of reps and it's a couple hundred likes and nobody really gives it a shit. Yeah, but yeah, once you do a pro show and get some exposure, especially if you top you you know, you do a pro show and you break the top three or top five, things change quick, man. I mean, it's yeah. like unless you are a freak of nature, like a like people were talking about Nick Walker before he even turned pro, or people were talking about Carlos before he even turned pro, you yeah. know what I mean? And unless you're one of those guys, but honestly, like a lot of these guys like Stu, Stu, um beef stew. Nobody was yeah. talking to him before last week, but now he's doing the New York Pro in a couple of weeks, and he is blowing up. So it's just some exposure, man. People love strong, rough, blue-collar bodybuilders. There is no more popular 
type of bodybuilder in the United States. I mean, Branch Warren. Bodybuilder, proved, bodybuilder. Yeah, Branch Warren proved it. I mean, he had terrible form, right? You know, uh, he had a he had a work on everything. It wasn't like he was gonna uh, out finesse these guys. It was impossible, no. right? Uh, yeah. But he had to just outwork and put that hard work in, and he built that. Uh, he took his genetics to the top, top, top that he possibly could. And it worked for him, man. And everybody loved it, you know. And the guy had the personality of a wet mop. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, you know, and everybody loves him. So it's really yeah. yeah, you you are you have the you have the breakdown of the the quintessential loved bodybuilder. I mean, you came in runner up, so that means you're the underdog. People love that, right? You're strong as a fucking ox. People love that. And you're a blue collar dude. Forget it, man. All you need is some exposure. And just don't forget the little people like me when you're on my show. Yeah, hey, I appreciate that, man. <laughs> so, all right. So uh, how much do you weigh now? How tall are you? So I'm I'm still getting back into my off season. I had some, uh, some digestion issues. I actually had H. pylori, which is like a gut bacteria infection, all through my prep for nationals, which is part of the reason why I feel like I looked like dog shit. But other than that, it took me a, a, a few months to get that all cleared up. And now we're back. I'm up to like 265, pushing 270 some days. Um, we still got a ways to go. I have a guest posing. I'm doing my first one in eight weeks. That's awesome. So I don't want to get too sloppy quite yet. I'm going to try to uh, keep it tight, but still we're pushing so much fucking food. So it's going to be one of those like, deep in the off season looks when I get on stage at the, in eight weeks at that Oregon open guest posing. And that's people. Well, that's what people like to see, you know, that's what like, I'm a fan. I mean, I, I tried competing. I was just not that good. At, you know, I'll just be frank with it. I'm better on a microphone than I am as a bodybuilder. Right. But I mean, that's what hooked me. Like I remember going to the Atlantic States, which is a huge NPC show in, in New York city. At the time, it was held in New York City. Now it's held in Jersey. And it was Steve Weinberger's show. And I don't know if they still do it, but at the time, the runner-up and the Mr. Olympia would guest pose at that show every year. So I go with my friend because, you know, I'm starting to get into bodybuilding and working out and everything. And and the guy was uh, it was Ronnie Coleman and Flex Wheeler oh, in, in, in the middle of their fucking off-season. And I was like, holy shit. And you know, human. yeah. And when you see, when you see, like, if you're a hardcore bodybuilding fan, that I've always liked bodybuilding, but that day turned me into a hardcore bodybuilding fan because then I fell in love with the freaks, right? And I'm like, oh, that's what I want to look like. But of course, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, man, when when you get on that stage and you're 270, and how tall are you? Five nine. Dude, you got you. You seem to have the perfect, uh, uh, physical structure. All the nuts and bolts is there. Yeah, no, it seems the nuts and bolts are there. It's just I got to fill my legs out a little bit. You know, I've got a bum knee and I've got some imbalances. I got a, like a mild scoliosis that always fucks with me. So like, you know, it's just perfecting those things, getting some size on my legs, and I think I'll be by next year able to stand with the open guys and be. You know, first call outs, obviously my my first goal at a pro show is first call out, you know. Yeah, I mean listen, of course, uh, but you know, things like that. I mean, you know, as long as your legs aren't severely under, which I doubt they are, you came in second, the nationals, those are the things you could fix. No, you know, only very few bodybuilders, you know, turn pro and, and shoot right to the top because they have no flaws. I mean, you know, yeah. at, at yeah. the the general well, there's really no general bodybuilding fan, but some fans believe that that's how it should be right like some it's it, it's the mike tyson syndrome right like once you when you were a kid and you saw mike tyson as the heavyweight champion every other heavyweight champion sucked after that as far as you were concerned right yeah. but that's not the case so every no, other every, yeah but but he was just the best the freakiest right so it's like the it's like the Nick Walker, Phil Heath thing where they just shoot to the top right after they turn pro. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. This is one in a million, right? It's just that the spotlight is on there. But most guys have to grind and grind and grind. And we we see, yeah. we see it all the time. Johnny that's Jackson. What I, like. I know you've got a Nate Spear on here sometimes. And he was that same way. I think he did nationals and 
Yeah. North Americans, USA's a few times yeah. before he finally got it. It just comes back better and better. And every year it comes back better. He grinds, yeah. grinds. And he is, I don't know if you've seen the updates on his Instagram. Dude, he is his, not. His guest posing was sick. Insane. I, I saw those pictures. He is not fucking around. Like, I am, I, I do this one thing called, uh, I do a couple of shows on my bodybuilding. I'm going to do bodybuilding babble and I'm going to do one dedicated to him because. He is this dark horse in New York pro that nobody's talking about. And I'm like, in my head, I'm going, how is nobody talking about this guy? He, he looks like a freak on Instagram. What, you know, everybody's Always talking about, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Comes in chiseled to the bone. You know, everybody's talking about Carlos. Everybody's talking about if Sergio's going to do it. Um, those are the, those are the two big uh, talking points right now. But Nate is just in the darkness. And I feel, I feel like that's a, that's has a lot to do with it, with the young guys like you, Stu, Nate. I mean, Carlos is a little different caliber, right? But still, it's like you got these guys waiting in the in the wind just to just to come out and make a splash. I feel like these young guys are just waiting in the darkness because you know, we saw the comparison over the weekend between Hunter Labrada and Stu. And it's like, wow, that's but that's a close comparison. And this I mean, guy just turned pro. Stu's four weeks out and right. Hunter's off season, but still, you know, you can definitely Absolutely. give respect for his dude. Right, right, right. So I feel like these guys, uh, you know, it's just there's it's some just amateur gonna... dudes. I'm like, how are you a fucking amateur? Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, Brandon Barrow, I think he's probably gonna do something pretty soon. Okay. Um, he got second at USA's next to Stu, mm. but super impressive. Um, tons of size, and then I seen him. I think deadlifting eight, 900 pounds again. I'm like, this dude's an amateur and he's deadlifting Ronnie Coleman weight. Like, yeah, yeah. I would step my shit up. These dudes are nipping at my heels. I, I'm like, young dudes too. They're getting yeah. started early. Big time. Yeah. No, it's no joke. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm just going to say one last thing and then I want to get back to you. Bodybuilding is no different from any other sport. Every generation gets better and better and better and better. And uh, the technology gets better and the workouts get better and the science behind it gets better. And it's just like that with any other sport. And of course you have the generation that says, Oh, in my time, we would do this and do that. And you guys wouldn't stand up, blah, 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 blah. But the truth of the matter is now every generation gets better and better. You might have one freakazoid here and there that could stand the test of time. But for the most part, bodybuilding is no joke. It's, it's the same thing, man. These guys, they're getting bigger, they're getting rounder, they're harder and they're just overall better and every generation is yeah. getting better and better. So I want to get I want to get back to you. Um tell me about what got you into bodybuilding, your NPC road and how many national shows you did and so on and so forth. So go ahead. Okay. So um I did my first show in 2018. So I I put on as much size as I could before I ever stepped on stage. I I never felt like I was big enough. I wanted to be like a big heavyweight, at least when I got on stage, I didn't want to be, it didn't make sense to compete anything less than that. If I'm, my goal was to be a pro bodybuilder one day. Um, so 2018, I finally did my first show and I won my class and I lost the overall. Um, so then I took a year and a half off and came back and I did well, then there was COVID and all that shit. So then it was, uh, 2022 I did my qualifier did the Oregon open. I won that the overall, and then went into USA's a few weeks after. And I had sucked down back into heavyweights. Um, after that NPC show, I came in at like two thirty-two. I looked really, really good. I liked it. And we were to see how much leaner we could get. So we sucked down. I was like two twenty at USA's my first national show and just flattened out, looked like shit. And, lost all my shapes. So I was like, I'm coming back next year, big and full as a house. I don't really care if I'm as peeled as I was. So then ended up doing that, but I kind of overshot it a little bit. I think I spilled just a smidge. Um, I could have been probably four or five pounds drier, but I was definitely full. All right. Um, but I, I got into it just, um, I think that's what you would ask. Yeah. Uh, so basically in high school, I was just a scrawny kid. You know, I played played lacrosse and I was getting knocked over and knocked out ah. all the time. And <laughs> yeah. So I was like, fuck this, I'm going to get big. Yeah. So I started going to the gym. There's like kind of old school bodybuilding gym at the time. And I just gravitated towards the big meatheads and they kind of just took me under their wing and 
showed me the ways and I just started eating chicken and steak walking through the halls in school and shit. That's and how it's done. The old heads always lifting heavy you. weights. And then I just, there's no looking back. I haven't taken any time off. I've never been like, ah, oh, I just lost my desire for it. Like, no, I've never stopped since I started. Mm-hmm. So I think that that makes a big difference in like my physique versus somebody, you know, you see some of these guys that they got great shape, great genetics, but they don't really have like the density that some of these dudes like, been training like maybe not the right way i didn't diet the right way i just ate as many calories as possible for the first eight years Mm -hmm. you know but just those like fundamentals just heavy ass weights year after year right like that's what really builds a great physique i think yeah i i I can't agree with you more and when you go into the difference is when you go into a hardcore gym you know, you still see that aspect, but hardcore gyms are kind of like here and there. You got a lot of like mm-hmm. these LA, LA fitnesses and New York sports clubs and the planet fitnesses. And you see young guys in there and I don't know where they learn these things, but lifting heavy weight doesn't seem to be priority. Body. To them. Dot com. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it is? On everything. Yeah. Okay. It's a, I don't know. Go figure. Like, yeah, you can check your boxes. Okay. I did three sets of 15, but like, right. did you almost die? Cause you <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? No, it's the truth. Actually, um, I would always tell people, you know, uh, if they would ask me, I would say, you do do ten reps, but you can't do number eleven, right? But Doug Fouché says it better than me. He 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 breaks it down better than me. He goes, he goes, <clears throat> grab uh, if you could do ten reps with a certain weight, grab heavier weight and do fifteen. <laughs> yeah. and, and and I've adapted that when people ask me, I've adopted that statement. And um, I'd say that, yeah. that 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 makes more sense because then people go, oh, 10 reps, you know. And yeah, you're, you're 100% right. You know what's funny is uh man, I trained my ass off, but I'm I'm learning that there's always another fucking gear. Like even oh, at this yeah. point now, like so I, I had done pretty good. I had I had won a show and then I was I was getting ready for the organ, I think, is when me and Stu kind of became friends and I started hanging out with him a lot and I I trained with him for a few months and we just did our leg days together for a few months mm-hmm. never met anybody that trains as hard as that dude and yeah I was like holy shit there's another level to this and so then I started and controlled too like I would lift heavy and go but he would squat and he's like so slow and and just like just let it hurt you know don't yeah yeah so Stu was a great influence on me, even though he's younger than me. I still kind of look up to him and yeah, you admire him. And, and there's nothing really, wrong with that. Yeah. You know, listen, is there's going to be people in your life that are younger than you and that you admire. And there's going to be people in your life that's older than you. And there's going to be people in your life that you just look at and you go, you, you are a piece of shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, how old are you? You said Stu's younger than you. He's 26. Yeah. Old you. So I just turned 30. Your, your phone had died. So now we're doing part two of Ryan Forster. I think we left off with you are 30 years old. Uh, you had turned pro. You were runner up at the, what was it, the uh, 2022 Nationals? Yeah. Yep. As, as a super heavyweight. And we were talking about your journey into bodybuilding. And then basically we were talking about um, what the future is for Ryan Forster now. As far as bodybuilding, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the plan right now um I'm just taking this year off, like I mentioned earlier, to just rebuild my my business. Um, I closed down my my painting company to try and, I mean, to turn pro. I, I knew I needed to take some time off climbing ladders and all the manual labor. You know how it is. Like, oh, yeah. Long, it's exhausting. And you got the elements and then all these unexpected circumstances that happen. And even if you're prepared, there's always something else that pops up. So, um I, I took the whole year off from painting for the most part so that I could just focus on that show and turning pro. Um, but, you know, it's expensive sport and I was just coaching and training people on the side. So I got enough to get by, but um, definitely went through some of my savings pretty quick doing that. So um, I'm back to painting this year. I got to get back on top of business stuff and my personal life. Um, I put everything on the back burner when I'm on prep. So now I'm I'm having to, you know, unbox everything and 
Um, so the plan is doing um, my pro debut next year. Mm-hmm. This that way I can spend a little bit more time growing and getting healthy again. And um, I had a lot of digestion and gut issues last year, so we're trying to get those all sorted out. So, do you have any idea what show you want to do next year? I was I was wanting to do the Legion this year because that's mm-hmm. in Reno and it's pretty. That's the closest one to me. I'm in Oregon. Um, but if I'm going to do something next year, then, you know, anything's on the table. Um, I think if, if I have this longer off season, I'll be able to be somewhat competitive. So I, I want to pick a, a decent one. Right. Well, I think you're very competitive. And I think it's a good idea that you take some time off and work on your physique for a year. A year is a lot of, a lot of time. And I think by that point, you could be really competitive, to be honest with you. I mean, if you're 5'9 and 270 on your off season and you're trying to push the envelope a little bit and at the same time working on your, your gut issues and keeping that waistline trim, I think you'll be a force to be reckoned with. And what about yourself? I mean, um, you have your business. Uh, you married? Any kids? Anything like that? No. Uh, I have a dog and my girlfriend. <laughs> and, uh, I like to keep it simple. I don't want to have kids ever. Um, I just... I like the lifestyle I live. I like to be able to go places when I want to Mm -hmm. um, work as late as I need to, things like that. Some people it's great. I think they make great parents. I think some people should not be parents. So you ain't kidding. Be one of those, you know? Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. I mean, um, I am one of those people. I truly believe that I would be a good parent and I am not a parent, which kind of stinks, but it is what it is, but you're right. I've seen some shitty parents, you know? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and, and it's like, like i can't having me as a dad I, I don't know man that'd be that'd be a rough rough childhood <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 but that's okay you know i think i think kids today have it a little bit too easy Agreed. So a little bit uh, a little bit of discipline never never hurts you know yeah uh, that's true yeah there's there's some good kids that's actually it's really surprising um i know we had talked on the other podcast about you know, like commercial gyms versus uh, private owned gyms. And, you know, you go to these commercial gyms and those are the kids you see with no manners. You can, they think, you know, the TikTok kids think they're really getting after it. They've been training just a few months and they're already taking their shirt off and posing in the mirror and shit. Yeah. I'm like, but at this private gym, I was surprised because there's the kids like they learn right away. This is gym etiquette. Like the owner, he's there, Tim and Julie, um, his wife, they're there. They make sure everybody is like respectful and does things the right way and yes. puts their shit away. And they, the kids actually want to be like, they want to work hard. And so I think they are out there, but it's far and few between. Yeah, I agree. And, um, and I think one of the problems, I mean, I go, we had this discussion. I go to both. I always uh, join one hardcore gym and I always join a corporate gym because of where I work and visiting family and so on and so forth. And I see it myself. Um, a lot of time, I don't really go very heavy anymore uh, because there's no need to. But sometimes, you know, I feel pretty good. And I'm like, oh, let me push the weight a little bit. And I'm looking around. And, you know, the hardcore gym is very easy. And I'm like, who is going to spot me? Who? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and so if I do find a guy that can spot, even an older guy, like they don't know how to spot. No. Do, do, you, know many times I, I, do you know how many times I wanted to do dumbbell press with dumbbells? And they're standing in front of me. And I'm like, dude, all right. And I have to put, the, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's okay. What were we going to say? I was going to say, it's it's funny. Um, we I did have to go into a corporate gym. Just my girlfriend was prepping and she was doing a bunch of cardio. So there was this place really close to the house. So she just went to do cardio. I went with her one day. I hadn't been to a corporate gym in so long. And I was like, wow, not a single person in here knows how to exercise. It's correct. It's awful. I don't know where they're looking to learn. I don't where, where on earth are they finding out where to work out? Cause it blows me away, you know? Yeah. And the guys, the guys are worse than the girls. Like the girls in a corporate gym, they still kind of have a little bit. Cause I think they're more like, you know, they're all into the butt thing. So they try to look and see how can they build their butt. But guys, it's just, I've never seen anybody screw up a bicep curl before. And I'm just like, how are you screwing up a bicep curl? I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, no, it happens to be true. So I didn't know your girl competes. Uh, is she also a pro or no? No, not yet, but she, she will be, um, she's, she's up and coming for sure. What category is she? Is she in? Uh, figure. 
Oh, okay. Okay. She, she's very muscular. She's um, pretty close to physique, but she doesn't want to have to push up on the, you know, pro level women's physique. You know, they have to run pretty heavy yeah, no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And she's very feminine and she wants to stay that way. And it's I'm like, I'd, I'd rather you stay soft and feminine instead of getting lean and turn into a mini dude. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I don't blame you know and feminine. Maybe not right away, but after, after a few preps like that, it's they're not the same. You know, you know what? Like you know, hybrid. no, it's the truth, man. It really is. I mean, you know, I've interviewed plenty of uh, women bodybuilders, and I have no problem with women bodybuilders. Some of them I've become very friendly with, but some of the things that they have uh, basically told me, like you know, some of them have to go get uh, what is it when you get hair removed. Um, it's not yeah. shaving, but it is, they don't shave. It's a, uh, some kind of, yeah, kind of, what is it like waxing? No, it's not a waxing. Like it's some kind of laser hair it? removal. Yeah. It's some kind of laser hair removal. It's like, yeah. really? Like, Oh, is it really worth it? Like you really, you know what I mean? And I'm all for it. Like if that's the, but me personally, I don't want to date someone who's got masculine features. Yeah, well, I mean, I've always said this. I mean, again, I'm going to reiterate, I have two degrees back behind me. So if anybody thinks I'm talking out of my ass, please refer to the you know, research I've done. Um, the more masculine of a man you are, right? I refer to them as hyper-masculine, guys like you and me who are blue-collar dudes. We're rough, a little rough around the edges. Maybe we grew up a little bit rough. We're blue, you know, we, we, we're hardworking. We prefer that over, you know, doing long division in a fucking office somewhere, right? The more masculine a man is, the more feminine he's going to want his woman. It's it's just human nature. Yes. And it, all you have to do is look at the couples. The more masculine a girl is, and I don't even mean looking. It could be personality-wise, too. And you look at the guy, and you go, oh, okay. You know, that's the type of guy that she could, like, kind of finesse and manipulate a little bit, where yeah. a guy like, like, guy like us, it's a red flag. Stay away from him. We're not, yeah. you know, we can't really finesse this guy too much, you know. And it happens to be true because I've always, I've always thought women with some muscle was attractive. Yeah. Always. And then I would, you know, even, you know, obviously before when I was single, if I approached one of these girls in the gym or at a show or anything like that, they, they knew immediately, immediately to stay away from them. Like, immediately, like, there was like radar. I was like, nope, not for me. Like, Jesus Christ. You know? But yeah, that's just that, that's human nature. That's basic human nature. And, and people don't want to admit that they think that you know when girls say oh i'm a boss bitch i don't need no man you know they have this attitude it's well well you know the type of guy that you're going to that you're that you're basically going to target is going to be a guy who is going to deal with that and that's going to be a feminized kind of guy yeah submissive man you know it's just it's just the way it goes and you know girl girls girls always throw this out they would go oh he's uh insecure and you know, small dick energy. It's like, no, you're a bitch and I don't want to deal with you. And that's, that's no. the problem. <laughs> you know? No, I think women's bodybuilding, women's physique is great. Like I absolutely awesome. love it. They're freaks too, just like us, but at home, I want a woman. Yeah. I am a fan of, of women's uh, bodybuilding, a true fan. And, but I am a fan of the actual sport because then you get into the fetish zone. Which is another topic which I've talked about with with uh, with other bodybuilding women, but listen, man, I am very happy that you came on. Uh, it's been it's actually been great. You joined us on Anabolic Academy, and uh, you're going to be on the MD show with us, and that's always fun because it's going to be me, you. It's usually, it's gonna, probably going to be me, you, Danny, Jason, Ons, Bo. You know Bo Lewis, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. If, who he is. if uh, I interviewed him and we talked about his uh his past and you should watch that it's very uh intense he had an intense <laughs> background he i don't know if you know but he went to jail for murder oh right on i yeah. gotta watch that <laughs> yeah one. you gotta watch that one and he didn't need a wet he didn't need a weapon he beat somebody to death fucking hey yeah yeah rough <laughs> rough background <laughs> dude but rough background and yeah. um great interview i mean but yeah definitely check it out and I will definitely see you on Wednesday. We'll keep in touch. And uh, till then, my friend, have a good night, brother. Yeah, you too. Thanks, man. You got it. Later.